We greet everyone in the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the Word of God, we're going to stand up at this moment. The disciples on the way to Emos. Luke, Luke chapter 24. We're going to read from verse 13. Luke 24, verse 13. From verse 13. Luke 24, from verse 13. From verse 13. Verse 3. We'll be here in the projection. This says the word of our God. Now, behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emos, which was seven million uh, miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him and he said to them what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are said then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and uh, have you not known the things which happened there in these days and he said to them what things so they said to him the things concerning jesus of nazareth who was a prophet uh, mighty in deed and words before god and all the the people and how the chiefs priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him but we we're hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all things, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, a certain woman of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When Now verse 29. Then they drew near to the village. No, 29. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And now, uh, 30. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. So 33. At the same time, they returned to Jerusalem. Lord, we praise you for all the blessings and benefits that you have given us. We ask that in your word, you once again may bless your people, your church. We pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. All the ones who walked with Jesus, the disciples, the crowd. Jesus was through their sermons. He had already said what was the plan, the project of God for their lives. And that he would obey his, his father and everything. And from the beginning, when Jesus went to be baptized, a prophet called John the Baptist told him, This is the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. And that God loved the world in such a way that he sent his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. So Jesus made a promise. And what was the promise that the Lord 
made. It is written in his word. And that's the promise that he made to us, the life, eternal life. So the promise of God through Jesus is eternal life. It is not life on this earth. It's heavenly life. My kingdom is not of this world. Jesus speaks about this. I'm going to the Father, prepare a place for you. A new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem. So all the ones who walked with Jesus, they heard those words. And the Bible says that on the third day, Jesus dies on the Friday. On Sunday morning, a third day, the disciples that walked with Jesus, two of them, they had abandoned the project. They abandoned the plan that God had for their lives. They stopped believing on what the Lord had promised also for them. And we now we can see how weak we are. The Lord, when He speaks to us, He reveals Himself to us, introduces to us a project, and on that moment we believe in those words, and then two days later, we stop believing, we stop trusting on the Lord. Oh, the Lord did not operate on the first day or on the second, so we're going to abandon the project and leave Jerusalem on the third day. We're going to go back to the world, we're going to go back to Emos, we're going to go back to our own old life. The disciples of Jesus, when they heard the sign, Lord, we left everything. Truly, they left everything. And what are we going to receive in return? 100 times uh, this life and the, the coming l new life. And the disciples, they had let go. They had not let go of everything. They had let go of a house in Emmaus. Because if the Lord Jesus did not answer to their hopes, they would have a place to go back to. If it is not according to what I, I idealize for my life, if God doesn't do what I wish He did for my life, then I'm going to go back to Emos. I left house there. And Jesus, He teaches them, uh, Lord's Father, you want to learn how to pray? May your will be done. And many times the disciples of Jesus, they want that their own will to be done. The word says, my brethren, that those men, they left, therefore, they left Jerusalem, going to Emos, about 12 kilometers, more or less. And they began to speak, or better yet, to lament. Because there is their hopes, they were all frustrated uh, regarding Jesus. They were talking and conversing, and Jesus comes close to them, and they did not realize that he was Jesus. And one of them even calls Jesus a uh, uh, traveler, a uh, uh, wanderer. Are you a foreigner? I have no idea of what happened in Jerusalem. Have you not known what happened in Jerusalem? And the word says, my brother, that they were sad. They were disappointed with God. Disappointed with Jesus. Servants of God. A servant of God should not be going about sad. There's a song that says, Who has Christ is always happy. 
They were sad because they were disappointed with Jesus. Many times we are disciples of Jesus. We are disappointed with Jesus. We get disappointed with God. And why this, do we have this disappointment? Because we don't have the ability, the capability of understanding the plan and the project of God for our lives. The word says that God's thoughts are greater than our thoughts. God's paths are greater than our paths. So we, need, we have a vision of understanding that is limited of the great project that God has for the entire humanity. The word of the Lord says the following, the following my brethren. That Jesus enters into this dialogue and they said, we are speaking about Jesus, the Nazarene. And a certain moment, a man called Bartimaeus, blind, when he heard that Jesus, the Nazarene, was passing by, he shouted, he pleaded to the Lord, Jesus, son of David, a man who was blind, I was sitting on the side of the road, he discerned who was passing by. And two disciples of Jesus that walked with Jesus, they didn't have the discernment of understanding that Jesus was not Jesus, Nazareth. Jesus can um, someone from Nazareth do anything? But no. Was not Jesus the Nazarene? Was Jesus King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? Jesus the Almighty, the Messiah, the one who was sent by God? No. Jesus of Nazareth. Prophet. The Samaritan woman said, I see that you are, prof you are a prophet. They were not able to see anything. The disciples were not able to see anything. Prophet, like I said before, prophet is, it is Ezekiel, Daniel, John the Baptist, and so many others. Jesus is more than a prophet. Jesus is God. So then we see that the concept, the understanding that they had regarding Jesus, oh, he was just another prophet. Because there have been many prophets in Israel, but they all passed, they all died. And so this is just another one that prophesied and made miracles and wonders, but also died. It was just another one. And they said something very interesting, and they said the following. The, uh, the priests and our princes, they gave him to be condemned to the cross, to death, and crucified him. Yet uh, another wrong understanding. Why a wrong understanding? Because Jesus... He was not given, he was not delivered. Jesus gave himself. He himself says, said, no one can take my life away, but I give, the, I give it. And in, in Galatians it says, he who gave himself for us, for our sins, to deliver us from the evil of the present century, according to the will of our God and Father. So they thought that who crucified Jesus were the priests, were the princes. But he, they, they did not understand the following, that Jesus crucified, they, he gave himself and crucified himself also for those two disciples because who killed Jesus, who crucified Jesus were not only the doctors of the laws, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, the princes. It was the entire humanity. And when Jesus goes to the cross of Calvary, he goes to the cross to save the entire humanity, including those two disciples. 
And the wage of death for those two disciples and for us was going to be death. The wage of sin is death. And the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. They had not understood that Jesus had died in order to forgive their sins. And Jesus died in order to restore the, their fellowship with God. They were also lacking this understanding. And they say the following, that we were waiting, we were expecting him to redeem Israel. They were hoping for someone that would enter into po the politics of the time and resol resolve their social and economic problems there. Someone that would uh, re-share uh, the land and goods. They were looking for a different Jesus. And many times, the disciples of Jesus, they're, they're in the same way, they're looking for a different Jesus. A Jesus to resolve their financial problems. Jesus can resolve it. To heal, to um, perform a miracle. Jesus does that. But he did not come for this and he did not promise it to anyone. And here the word says, my friend, oh, that's what we wanted, that he would redeem Israel. And then he says something interesting. And he, today is the third day. The Jews, they have a tradition. I don't know if to this day, but in the times of Jesus, it existed. They believed that the soul would only separate from the body after three days. And so there was a little hope. If until the third day nothing happens, then nothing will happen. So now, on the third day, there is no hope in Israel. It's interesting that they participated on the resurrection of Lazarus. And Jesus said, Lazarus is not dead, but he still sleeps. Because for God, dying or being asleep is the same thing. There's no difference for him to awake somebody from the sleep or resurrect someone, because he's God. He gives an order and it's resolved. That's why Jesus stayed there, waited until the fourth day, in order for that Jew Jewish tradition would be uh, be fallen to the ground because I waited until the fourth day because if I resurrect on the third day they they even could have said oh it is normal because the, the body has not separated from the soul so then Jesus waited for the fourth day when when the smell was already coming out Jesus went there and resurrected Lazarus to show to them and to Lazarus that for God there is no time he acts and operates in the moment in which he determines. He can be in the body or outside of the body. It doesn't matter to God. God gives an order and the dead resurrects. And that's our God. The God of those disciples. Our God. A God that has power and authority over time and over death. So the word says, my brethren, that That con all this conversation there, he said, there are a couple of women that went to the tomb. Many times we we see this. Let's go to the tomb. Let's look for Jesus there. And it's interesting that at the time, the Christians at the time they were very similar to the Christians of this time. Sometimes you want to look for Jesus on the tomb. Jesus is not here. He has already resurrected. They did not believe in the church. The women there represent the church because they went to the tomb to see Jesus. They did not find the body of Jesus because his body, because he had already resurrected, and they still didn't believe in the words of those women. It was very common at the time, men not to believe in the words of women. There was this this difficulty at that time, but they were servants of God. The, the word says, curse is the man who, does, who believes on man. But it was not man or woman. But they were servants of God, given the testimony that Jesus had resurrected. I have a group of, of women here that are giving a constant testimony that Jesus resurrected. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
And Jesus then says to those two men, Are you are you foolish? What is being foolish? Is is laid of heart. They they are difficult they have difficulty in understanding things. To believe in all the things that the prophets had said. So Jesus in a certain point says the following examine the scriptures because they are the ones who testified of me. Care for it because in it there is eternal life. And all the prophets prophesied about regarding Jesus. But they did not hear any of the prophets. And many times the prophet of God is speaking. And the disciple has not given creed, has not checked on the Bible if what the prophet is saying is according to the scriptures. The Christians of Bahia know whenever somebody preached, they would go and check on the Bible to see if it was in agreement with the Bible so that it would not be foolish or uh, have difficulty understanding. So Jesus, he explains to those men and from Moses, he begins to explain and describe and to show to each one of those two men the entire plan and the entire project of God for humanity. And my brethren, and even so, they continue with their eyes closed. And all the persistence of the Lord uh, to this moment there was not a was not enough to open the eyes of those two men. And many times we, we see the scriptures, we examine the scriptures, we hear the prophets, but our eyes continue like if they were closed. We continue without understanding, without realizing the great project that God has for our lives. And we continue without noticing <coughs> who is walking beside us the one is on the same path as us and it is interesting that they, those men they left Jerusalem and went to Emos they went to a, a direction that was opposite to the project of God and man has always walked in this opposite direction they go from Jerusalem towards Emos and Jesus came exactly for this to pass, go down to Emos in order to bring them back to Jerusalem. And that's what, at this moment what the Lord Jesus is doing. Jesus is doing this at this moment. He's walking with us towards Emos in order to redirect us towards Jerusalem once again. And the word says, my brethren, that when they came into the town, Jesus was going to continue on his trip. But at that moment there, those men con um, convinced him. They pleaded for him. They implored him so that Jesus would stay with them. And it is interesting that the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us, and they realize they need Jesus there with them. My brother and sister, on this moment of darkness, of the night, we need to realize that we need Jesus beside us. The day was already coming to an end. It was already late. The project of God is already coming to its conclusion. The night was already over. The day was already over. It was already night. And we're living this spiritual moment, spiritual moment, the moment of the night. And at this time, this moment of the night, it is very important the presence of the Lord beside us. So they asked, they convinced Jesus. Maran, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus never rejected the invitation of anyone. 
Every person that invited Jesus to enter into their house, he entered into their house. And I feel like the house of Zacchaeus, he, was even, he even invited himself, because the desire of the Lord is exactly this, to be in our house, to be in our lives, to be present in our midst. The, he is this Emmanuel, the God that wants to be constantly with us. In the Word, my brethren, it says that Jesus entered. And when Jesus entered into the house of those men, something interesting happened on that day. And sometimes we do not realize. If I invite someone, anyone, to come to my house, the house is mine. So I'm the one who's going to serve. I'm the host of the house. It was a custom in Israel, the, the head of the household, to break the bread and distribute the food, or one of his servants to do this. But when Jesus entered the house of those men, Jesus became the owner of the house. Jesus became the Lord of the house. He became the host. And this is something that was not very common to do. He could have st st remained sitting down there and waiting to be served, but he did the opposite. My brethren, when the Lord Jesus entered into our lives, He enters to serve us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you see how good God is. Those men received Jesus, but they received from Jesus. They received Jesus in a special way, in a different way. They received Jesus and allowed Jesus to enter their house and say, "Now, Jesus, you own this place." You can give the orders, you're going to say everything, and we're going to obey. And when God enters into the house of a servant, and that's what happens. He's the one who does and determines all things. That was said that Jesus there, he sits at the table. Now was a moment of fellowship, sitting at the table with Jesus. And many times we don't have this opportunity of sitting at the table with the Lord and allow Him to break the bread, allow Him to prepare the supper. It's been a long time since we had a supper here, supper of the Lord. Supper of the Lord. So then Jesus, when he picks up the bread, he opens up the bread. The mystery for those men was revealed. Inside of the bread was the mystery. They had already participated in other supper, suppers with Jesus. When Jesus picks up the bread, the bread, he says, "This is my, this is the bread. This is my body that was given to you." And at this moment, when they, he opened up the bread, the mystery reveal, revealed to those disciple, disciples who were in Amos. He was telling them. In the same way that he's saying to each one of us here, so you are part of the body. Church, body of Christ. Those men, they were part of the body. You know why? Because they ate of the bread and drank of the wine. And so, at that moment, they understood one thing. They, w they were part of a project. And of a project of God. My brother, many times the disciple does not understand that they are part of a project, an eternal project. That you were not only called, but you were chosen to be a part of this project. Many times, we have no direction without understanding. We are foolish walking aimlessly in the opposite direction of the project. But because you ate the bread, because you drank the wine, Jesus goes towards your life to rescue you once again, to bring you back to the project. So when Jesus opened, breaks the bread, he blessed and break, broke the bread, their eyes were opened. So the mystery, mystery is revealed, the mystery of salvation. 
the mystery of death of resurrection. So then Jesus, when this happens, they felt something interesting. Whoever was baptized with the Holy Spirit, the great majority felt this. They feel fire. Was not a fire burning into our hearts? The servant of God, when they hear the word of God, when they hear Jesus speaking, their hearts burn. And the hearts were burning fire. My soul is burning fire. Oh Lord, I want you to burn to my soul like a, a bush burns. And I want to feel your power. The words that were being said by the mouth of the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's why their hearts were burning. Was our heart not burning when they, he opened the scriptures? What a glorious thing when you open the scripture and we begin to read the word of God. Our heart begins to burn. You feel the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And this is what was happening with those men. So when this happened, and the Bible says, my brother, that Jesus vanished. But when Jesus vanishes, those men made, made a choice. Jesus didn't say anything. Didn't tell, ask them to go back to Jerusalem. He didn't say that this place was wrong, that they were outside of the project of God. He didn't say anything. When he broke the bread, he revealed the mystery. Jesus vanished. vanished. And Jesus says, in the world you will not see me again, but you will see me because I live and you will see me. And so at this moment they understood that when their eyes were open, that their place was not Emos. When the bread was broken, the mystery was revealed, they understood that they were in the opposite direction of the project of God. We can even say that they were in disobedience. Because Jesus said, remain in Jerusalem until power comes from heaven upon you. There was a promise that whoever remained in Jerusalem would be receive power from God and the Holy Spirit would be poured out upon them. They were speaking tongues and would prophesy. The project of God is the same. It's to remain in the presence of God, it's remain inside of the project of God, remain in obedience. The voice of the Lord, because in Jerusalem, where the church is gathered, this church will be raptured, it will be filled with power. My brother, at this moment, when Jesus appeared, they wanted to remain seeing Jesus. The, the Bible says that at the same moment, the Bible says that if today you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. So they heard the voice of the Lord. Their heart was not hardened. Their hearts actually melted. Because there was there, their hearts were burning. And they understood the project, they understood that their place was not Emos. My brother, the, the place of the church not Emos. Our place, my place is not Emos. Our place is Jerusalem. So at the same time, at that moment, they they made a choice. They took an action. The choice that they made at that moment of the night was to return to Jerusalem. My brother, my friend, this moment in which we're living, we need to return to Jerusalem. Disciples, they were in the opposite direction. Jesus went there, spoke with them, broke the bread, showed the project, opened up their eyes. And they had to understand that now it's time to return to Jerusalem. We are at this time of the night walking towards Jerusalem, breasted between them and the Lord. Because our destination is Jerusalem. The word says, my brother, that when they arrived in Jerusalem, 
they found the entire people of God gathered. When they came, when we arrived in the heavenly Jerusalem, we will see or meet with all the people of God gathered. When John goes, he goes to the John goes to the holy city. Who are those who come? Those are who are the ones who came to great tribulation. They washed their their garments in the blood of the Lamb. It was that great crowd and the disciples of Jesus. They may, they was able to contemplate because he was back in Jerusalem. When they, those men returned to Jerusalem, they meet the entire church gathered. And my brethren, the Lord is calling us. He is conclaiming us to return to Jerusalem, to go back to the project, and to wait in Jerusalem, wait in the presence of the Lord for the rapture of the church, being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so that we will be transformed in Jerusalem is in the presence of the Lord and at the same time they returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven congregated with them so when when you return to the house of the house of to Jerusalem to the house of the Lord they see we are all congregated we are all gathered together waiting for the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's interesting, my brethren, that at that moment, until that moment, Jesus, he had not gathered with that people in Jerusalem. Then somebody might ask, why? Why Jesus had not presented himself in the midst of the church, uh, in the midst of those brethren, at, until that moment. Exactly. Because the body was not complete. That's why the bread, the mystery. When the, the, the body got together, it became complete, so then Jesus pr presented himself in that midst. Whenever we were in fellowship with the Lord, the Lord presented himself in in, in our midst. The church will be raptured at that moment when all the children of the Lord are congregated in spirit in Jerusalem. And Jesus will come, present himself, and take his people on the rapture. Amen. The Lord sh has shown in a spiritual gift a woman, and she believes in her understanding that what it, she has sought from the Lord the Lord has not furnished, has not given to her. And it's like if the Lord, her understanding is, is that the Lord didn't want to resolve her problem and give a blessing to her. She even said, of oh, the Lord, of oh, the Lord, the hands of the Lord are shrunk. They are not open to bless me. But the Lord tonight is telling to this woman, to this sister, that in Isaiah 59, Verse 1 says the following, The hand of the Lord is not shrunk in order not to save, or his ear is not closed not to hear your plea, your supplication, your prayer. But at the moment, right moment, determined by God, He will be acting, operating on to your benefit and your, on your behalf. His hand is not shrunk and his ear is not closed, but there is a time according to God, in the time determined by God, the promise that he made to your life will be fulfilled so that his name may be glorified. The Lord also has shown in another spiritual gift that tonight was served here by the angel of the Lord, water and oil. And we see uh, we came with our vessel. A few needed water, others needed oil, and there were some that needed both. Water, speaking ref of the refreshing, and oil, joy of salvation, the Holy Spirit present in our midst, so that the lamp may continue to remain lit. But there was a woman, especially. She understood that today she didn't need, today she didn't need water or oil. Her need was another one. And her necessity of, the, of this woman was of receiving blood. So then it was offered to this woman blood. 
So then she would pick up this blood and this blood would restore her life completely. And what does that mean? Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So she came here looking for forgiveness of her life and fellowship. It is what says that whoever comes to me, I will never push them away. She came, she knows her need, the moment in which she is leaving, and th what she needs, and the Lord is giving to the sister what she needs tonight, a new life, a new moment of fellowship, so that the project of God may continue to be fulfilled in her life. Amen. Let's now listen to a song. Manda ver. Põe isso aí. Se for, vai ser uma beça. Se não for, a gente acha outro. Pode, pode mandar.
I invite this church to stand up. I'm going to praise you. Praise you. Lord, five for your zeal, your care, salvation, health, and fellowship, and our sustenance and deliverance because you have opened up our eyes and has gone with us to Emos and given us the understanding to return, Lord, to Jerusalem so we can glorify. We are congregated with your people, with your church, and you have every day presented yourself to us. We praise you, Lord. Because it is the manifestation of grace, of a love and a mercy is what is the reason that has kept us standing in your presence. Bless your people, his presence. Bless the ones who are also connected with us. And in the home of each one, you may be the host. May Lord carry the bread, the word, the grace, the favor, the, mer the mercy. Heal the ones who are sick. Act, Lord, operate, Lord, on behalf of of your servants and at this moment Lord we may plead Lord f we plead for your help and assistance and above all Lord your presence was that you remain with us because the day is late the night has already risen and our desire Lord is to stand up at any moment tonight and to be gathered with you in, in the heavenly Jerusalem Send us home to in peace to your ho homes. We pray in the name of Jesus. In our name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. The church may be seated. The brethren who are connected with us, a few ushers and deacons, if they need an assistance or a support, you can look for them. And also Pastor Ronildo here is connected. He can give you the proper assistance. And the brethren who are in the church here, we are here at your disposal. If you need prayer, uh, assistance, we are here at your disposal. And I'd like to remind, tomorrow we have Sunday school. Let's watch together through YouTube in Brazil. And also once again, 7.30 Another service of glorification to the name of the Lord. Or group A. Group A. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord.